Welcome back to the class on power chain constraint, right? In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the self-control synchronous motor drive with a load computation. This is a circuit diagram for the self-control synchronous motor drive with a load computation. Here, the load is nothing but a synchronous motor. The circuit is consisting of two converters. This is the source side converter where we are giving AC supply. This is the load side converter where we are connecting the shatter winding of a synchronous motor. This is the field winding of a synchronous motor. That's why we are calling this converter as a load side converter. The output voltage of the source side converter is VDL, whereas the output voltage of the load side converter is VDL. ID is nothing but a DC link current. This is a DC link inductor. The main purpose of this DC link inductor is the, to reduce the ripples in a DC current. Now we are going to see how exactly the power will be passing from the source to the load. In this case, load is nothing but a synchronous motor. Suppose if you maintain the firing angle of the source side converter less than the 90 degrees, then this converter will be acting as a rectifier. So the AC will be converted to the DC. If we maintain the load side converter firing angle greater than the 90 and less than the 180, then this converter will be acting as a inverter. So now the power will be passing from the source side to the motor. Now how we are going to control the speed of this motor means by changing the firing angle of this source side converter. The torque developed in the synchronous motor that we can control by changing the voltage VDS as well as a VDA. Now suppose if you want to apply the regenerative brake for the synchronous motor, the converter should be operated as a rectifier. So the firing angle of this converter becomes a Less than the 90 degrees, source side converter will be operated as an inverter. So, whatever the power is given by the synchronous motor that is available to the DC link, again it will be given back to the supply. In this manner, we can apply the regenerative braking for the synchronous motor. Load side converter, the six SCRs are there. How this SCRs will be computed means that is due to the, the induced voltage in a scatter wire. Generally, this current taken by the synchronous motor leads the voltage. So, the induced voltage in a scatter winding will be commuted as the SCRs in a load side counter. As one more important point here is that when the motor current is leading the voltage, then the supply current lags the voltage. The supply current and the motor current will be anti phase. For a high rating of synchronous motor drive, only type rotor synchronous motor. For low rating, the synchronous motor will be taken as a permanent magnet synchronous motor. In the scatter of the synchronous motor, the position sensors are placed which are generating a signal proportional to the rotor speed and position based upon the frequency the firing pulse are generated to the load side converter. When the motor is operating at a leading power factor, the SCR in a load side converter is computed based upon the user voltage in a scatter wire. How we are going to generate a firing pulse to the load side converter mean? In a scatter, we are keeping a position sensor. The position sensor is giving information about the frequency as well as the phase angle of the induced voltage in the scatter winding. Based upon that frequency and phase angle, we are applying the firing pulse to the load side inverter. The load side inverter, the maximum firing angle is limited less than the wire degree to take into consideration of the commutation as well as the overlap angle. Commonly, the commutation advance angle is defined for the load side converter that is beta L that is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha L, where alpha L is nothing but a firing angle of the load side converter. In a self control mode, the speed of a scatter flux is same as the rotor speed. So, the firing pulses based on the all effect sensors which are placed on the scatter at every electrical 60 degree. It gives the information about the frequency of induced voltage and the scatter winding. Phase angle of it. The phase angle is highly depending upon the position of the field pole with respect to the scatter winding. The computation of load side SCRs are occurred due to the induced voltage in scatter winding. At low speeds, the induced voltage may not be sufficient to turn off the SCR, I think it below the 10% of the rated speed. The SCRs in a load converter is commutated by bringing the current to the SCR is zero. By operating the source side converter as an inverter, which gives the negative voltage VDS for every 60 degrees, which commuted the load side, again the source side converter taken back to the rectifier operation. 
Suppose if the T1 TT is conducted from the roadside converter, now we want to compare the SCR after the 60 degrees. Now the source side converter is operated as an inverter, which gives a negative voltage, which compared the both the T1 T2. Now the source side converter taken back to the rectifier operator. Now the pulses are applied to the T3, T4 in a load side converter. This is ensured because the frequency of load side converter is low than the frequency of source side converter because the speed of the synchronous motor is less than the rates. This method also can apply for the speed above the 10% above the rates. See, in this manner, we are going to control the converters both source side as well as a load side converter. Now we are going to see the closed loop speed control of the load comb rates, inverter, synchronous motor type. Now this is the motor. This motor is consisting of stator as well as a rotor. In the stator, we kept the all effect speed sensor. This is a load side converter. This is a source side converter. This is a DC link conductor. This is a DC link current. This is a AC supply. So because of the stator is equipped with a speed sensor, it will give the information about the what is the frequency of the voltage induced in stator winding, phase angle of the induced voltage in a stator winding. By means of a voltage sensor, the three signals are coming outside that will be processed here. It is given the output of how much frequency of induced voltage in stator winding. Then what is the delay angle between the each phase voltage? Now here we are using the phase delay. The main purpose of this phase delay is it will delay the phase pulse such a way that beta L, nothing but a commutation advanced angle will be maintained as a constant. Now the output of the phase signal will be given to the firing circuit. This firing circuit will be generating a pulse to the SCLs in a load side commutator for a given frequency with a advanced commutation angle as a constant. This frequency will be derived from the sensor what we kept in a stator winding over this is the load side converter when you come to the source side converter the source side converter is operated securely during the transient operation the change in the speed of a motor will be occurred at a maximum torque so that the transient time period will be reduced now if you observe this closed loop block diagram source side converter from the terminal voltage sensors we're getting the speed of a rotor that will be compared with the reference speed the error in the speed is given to the speed sensors again it is a pa controller the output of the sensor is given to the current limiter this is nothing but a dc link current limiter the output of the current limiter is id star nothing but a reference value to the dc link current again here by means of current sensors we are measuring the DC link current. The error in the DC link current will be given to the current controller. The error current will be processed by the current controller and giving the firing process to the source side controller. In this manner, the maximum torque will be developed in a synchronous motor and the speed of the motor will be changing from one value to the other value. Suppose if we increase the reference speed here, the actual speed is less than the reference speed. The error in the speed is positive. Based upon the sign of the error speed, the commutation advanced angle will be maintained, whether it is for the motoring operation or the braking operation. See here the reference error in the speed is positive, so the commutation advanced commutation angle becomes a positive. In that manner, the load side commutator will be operating. When we come to the source side converter, that error in the speed will be processed by the speed sensor. So current limiter will be limiting the DC link current to the maximum value because the error in the speed is positive. So whenever the current limiter is limiting a current to the maximum value, nothing but a, the maximum torque will be developed in the synchronous. When the maximum torque is developed, now the speed of the motor will be accelerating very fastly and reaches the desired value. Once it is the, reaches the desired value, current limiter will be desaturated and DC link current will be decreases. It will be settled to the such a value that the developer torque in a motor is equal to the low torque in a motor. Suppose if we take the, the reference speed is decreased. If the reference speed is decreases, the actual speed of synchronous motor is higher. So the error in the speed becomes a negative. When the error in the speed is negative, depending upon the sign, the advanced computation angle will be set at here for a constant value that gives the reason rate to braking operation for the motor that will be accepted by the load side converter. See, in that manner, the fire, advanced firing angle will be setting the firing angle to the load side converter. So the speed of the motor will be decreasing. Once the speed of the motor is decreasing, where the error between the reference speed and actual speed is decreasing, 
increases again that will be processed by the speed sensor you will be setting the current limiter to the such a value the low torque in a motor that is equal to the developer torque in a synchronous in this manner we are changing the speed of a synchronous motor from one value to the another value at a constant advanced angle as well as a maximum torque developed in a so that the transient operation of the motor will be decreased. In this manner, the closed loop blo block diagram of a synchronous motor drive will be operated for the self-control mode. Thank you very much. If you have any doubts, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel so that I am always welcome to answer all your questions.